good afternoon friends uh, thank you so much for taking the time out to logging in today uh, this session as you know is brought to you by the wellinker hybrid program and i am really thankful to dr rajesh aparnath and the wellinker hybrid team for giving us this opportunity to connect uh, via facebook live now uh, i'm here to tell you about myself uh, how this course benefited me what it can mean for you and therefore how do you take it so a short background before i start uh, completely Uh, my name is Nasir Syed and I am an October 12 pass out of this uh, magnificent institute. Uh, I work for General Mills India Private Limited and I head sales uh, for the bakeries division that we have. We essentially sell the Pillsbury uh, premixes to the B2B industry so I have I can say I'm a B2B specialist for the past two decades now. It's been uh, a, a fantastic journey so far. I started my initial days with uh, hotel management I did my hotel management and uh, I joined the hotel industry I worked there for 4 years and I realized that I probably wanted something more dynamic something more challenging and that's when I ventured out to uh, get something different in my career prospects uh, one thing was very sure in those days as well is that I wanted to continue doing in the field of what my education specialized which essentially was hotel management so i had done my hotel management i had done my bachelor's of business administration again in uh, hotels uh, as a bag as specialty uh, i also did my american hotels and motels association diploma which was again to do with the hotels so when i was looking out for a career opportunity i thought that i should stick to what i had learned uh, i should stick to what i thought would be my career prospects and and therefore i start look started looking out for opportunities in that arena thankfully uh, there was this company which came in those days which was called international best foods and uh, i was given a job as a sales trainee i joined in as a sales trainee and uh, the challenge that time was to sell to the b2b industry especially to the hotel industry uh, the food service industry and the airline catering industry uh, food products Uh, interestingly i must tell you this that food uh, convenience food was a very unknown uh, word then i am talking about way back in 97 98 when uh, i uh, today i take great pride in saying that mayonnaise is something which is very close to my heart because my career started with mayonnaise and it built up with mayonnaise and to tell you in those days it was very difficult for people to pronounce mayonnaise because mayonnaise had just come into india people didn't know and i went into towns telling people what mayonnaise about and people saying mayonnaise burger sauce safed cream cream sauce and you know and those kind of things which was which was hilarious at that point of time but my education helped me because i had hotel management i knew what mayonnaise was and then we started selling and therefore we had soups uh, which people thought that soups were always always fresh and it never can be a powdered soup so that was another challenge and then that that's how it happened we had a lot of products then Uh, it so happened then that uh, international best foods got acquired by hindustan unilever and by default i became a hindustan unilever employee and that was again a fantastic journey my initial journey uh, thankfully i had bosses whom uh, i still am in touch with and who really groomed me they were my mentors and uh, they actually taught me what sales was all about but b2b sales was special it was uh, different because uh, not many companies were there like international best foods was the first company which came into india trying to tell people what convenience food product was all about but yeah it was a fantastic journey i went on there and then i was in the hindustan unilever limited and 12 13 years now in fact uh, i think yesterday i completed 13 years so yesterday was my anniversary of working with general mills and i have completed 13 years now with general mills so in 2004 i moved across to pillsbury and from then i have been with uh, pillsbury and uh, Honestly I never felt the need of doing an MBA and uh, it was just that career was progressing I was doing well uh, there was a lot of competition but uh, I knew my core subject which was food and I uh, I love food basically so it was more easy to sell food to relate to people to understand to people and that's when I realized that in the first lesson that I learned probably in sales was never try to sell what your company wants you to sell or what you want to sell you know it's always important that you sell what your customer wants to buy you need to identify what the customer wants what is he really looking for and then proposition your uh, product accordingly and i assure you it works and you having said that uh, i think about 16 18 years down the line when i was experienced enough in sales i can say i had fairly reached positions that i wanted to uh, reach 
and then it struck me and throughout that journey people kept on telling me that do your mba it will be important it is required if you want to grow further you need an mba but i was like life is moving good life is then i think somewhere down that belief was there that i don't think i can do it where is the time to do an mba you know it was it was just not uh, i didn't think i was cut out to leave as completely a workaholic could not think beyond work and then think of mba so immediately the first picture was oh studies books exams uh, and it's been about 16 years since i left everything how do i get back to books again and fortunately uh, wellinger happened wellinger happened for a very emotional reason it wasn't that i wanted to have an mba my father always used to tell me that you need to do your mba you need to do your mba and i think somewhere down the line it struck me that yes what he says is right so let me please him more importantly i also realized that those days when i was doing interviews and i'm talking about 2010 2011 Uh, I realized that every person that I was interviewing was actually an MBA. Things had changed, and companies wanted to look profile. So our brief to even though I was not an MBA, our brief from the management to the HR placement consultants was get us MBA. So minimum qualification became MBAs. And when I realized that I was interviewing MBA, uh, it could be difficult because I myself didn't know what MBA was all about, except for knowing that it's a Master of Business Administration. I didn't know beyond that. So I thought. what my father said made sense uh, what my other peers and colleagues were saying then did make sense but then the big hunt big hunt started of what do i choose which college do i affiliate with what do because it was not that i wanted to do it with anybody just because i wanted to have an mba i i thought that you know i deserved a good college which would actually add into my profile and fortunately through a friend a uh, close friend who was wanting to do mba she was anyways researching and i she she got a couple of brochures and i picked up wellinger from that because I thought at that point of time, one thing interesting that Wellinger had, which nobody else did, was the virtual classrooms. You know, they had V lectures, they had V lounge, they were talking about uh, PCPs, they were talking. So I felt this was an MBA, which was not completely a distance learning program, uh, and but also had a lot of uh, um, practical sessions involved into it. And the best part was Saturday Sundays. You know, Wellinger had this fantastic PCPs. They said Saturday Sundays. Uh, I think in that point of time it was three months, uh, once in three months. I'm not sure if it's still like that, but in those days it was once in three months. So I said it, it's it's worth it. Let's do it. And then I came across this brilliant professors that Wellinger has, uh, and I'm still in touch. Fortunately, I'm still in touch with all the professors that we uh, have here in Wellinger. They're still a great uh, body to have. So I can name and I can tell you, Dr. Deepak Bhattacharya, fantastic, absolutely fantastic mentor, motivator, inspiration. Uh, professor venkatayar you cannot have a better motivator in terms of management corporate thinking uh, basic uh, aptitude to life fantastic and then the wellinger has his two fantastic gurus which i call in fact i call them the G- jodi of jay and viru you will never find them inseparable which is uh, dr rahul shah and uh, professor suresh pujari you know these are fantastic accounts i always had this fear of accounts uh, Uh, it would be really fair to say that i never wanted to ac- attend accounts uh, the pcbs that they had but one lecture that i had with them i knew how interesting the subject could be that's that's a teaching standard at wellinger anyway so so that is how i got into this uh, fantastic program and let me tell you it wasn't easy definitely was not easy you know uh, i don't think wellinger does a program for the sake of doing and fortunately it matched with me because my idea was also not just to have a mba for the sake of having an mba so i got really involved with the books with the projects uh, with the classrooms pcps and everything that uh, wellinger gave us it was a fantastic learning journey and what i realized that most of it i was already doing in my life there was there was nothing new that i was learning except when i got deep into the books i realized that the way i was doing was not too systematic you know and that's what wellinger taught me that's what the mba the hybrid program at wellinger taught me that theory could be mixed into practical and we could make the best use of it and i think that was really the turning point of my life so i can definitely tell you not for the sake of uh, pleasing anybody here but the wellinger program or after the sessions or classrooms that i had uh, and started mixing theory with my practical way of doing work i realized i was doing work in probably half the time what i also realized that and my job i was learning that time sales in which i thought was and i was an expert uh, and i believe that i was doing very well in sales but one thing i realized after i joined the uh, wellinger program was that it gave us more insights about what other departments could be you know so when you're when you're aspiring to reach higher positions when you're aspiring to get into corporate levels and higher positions in life you need to know what the other departments are for example a supply chain you need to know what hr does at the back end 
what production management is all about, what sourcing is, what procurement is. And that's when I realized that I had spent a lot of time in sales without realizing what the other backends were. I was interacting, yes, at my level, I, then I was interacting with all those other departments. But uh, fortunately, after doing my course, I think I realized that I could relate better to them. I could talk to them in their language. Uh, when I was doing interviews, I could uh, figure out the uh, MBA holders who came, who said we have an MBA, to figure out basically whether they were really MBAs or whether they were the paper MBAs. You know, it made a big difference to me. So I think that's about uh, the journey that I had, the learnings that I had. I think we have some questions coming here. And should we take them now? Yes, yeah, so I think uh, Rohan, thank you. You are the first one to have us a question. And uh, you say, how do people in sales handle rejection? Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, how do you handle rejection? I honestly, if you ask me, uh, I remember the Honda ad. I don't know how old you are, but if you ever remember the Hero Honda ad, ad that once came, fill it, shut it and forget it. You know, and I think that's what I do on my sales call. That's why I, I teach my team also on the sales call is that every ball cannot be hit for a six. You will have some misses, but you need to take them in your stride. Rejection, I think, will only, only come if you are not prepared. I think sales, when you are interacting with customers or when you are doing a product selling or any kind of selling for that matter, how much of it are you ready with? You know, and I, I, I take this, uh, I think, opportunity to tell you something which that I have learned and picked up in my life is that the five no's, you know, the five, not the N-O no's, but the K-N-O-W-S. There are five no's that if a salesperson uh, genuinely believes in and does, I don't think rejection will be a word. I, I, I honestly don't take rejection as a word here. And the five no's are you should know your company. You know, very often I see people getting into jobs because they want a job, not because they like the subject or because they know what the product is or what the company is. First and foremost, when you're sitting in front of the customer, you definitely need to know a lot about your company, what your company can do, what it does, who are your colleagues, what is the level of uh, hierarchy in your company. The other thing I think that you need to know is know your product very well. You cannot be sitting in front of a customer and trying to tell the customer what you want to tell because you need to understand that the customer on the other side is as smart at not buying, as smart you are as at selling. You know, you may think you are the best seller and. You, but the customer on the other side is seeing salespeople day in, day out. That's his business you have gone to. So be it any industry that you go to, you will have customers who are interacting with salespeople day in, day out, selling the same product probably in a different way. And they so therefore they have good reasons to tell you no. You know. So if you do your research, you know your company, you know your products, um, very importantly know your customers, uh, what requirement, what they are, what are the, what is the customer looking for. What is the competition that is doing? You know, know your competition extremely inside out. What is the competition doing? What are they offering? What is it that you can offer them better? Offer them better. And uh, finally, the last no, which is the fifth no, is your know yourself. You know, that is the it. That I think in sales, if you know yourself, do a SWOT analysis about yourself. I still do it after 24 years of experience now. I ensure I do a SWOT every three months to figure out what I did in the last three months and what I need to do, what are my strengths and where do I need. So I think the best way, and I, one of the professors and Dr. Deepak Bhattacharya taught me this, you know, your strengths also, so you have a strengths, opportunities, weakness and threats. Always look at getting your opportunities to become your strengths. Use your strengths to use them for your opportunities. All right. The threats that you have, don't let them become your weakness. Okay. So sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let me do this again. So you have your strengths on one side, you have your weakness on the, uh, the other side, you have opportunities and the threats now. So your strengths and weakness, so the top bottom, you know, so every weakness that you have, think of how do you convert it into a strength. Every threat that you have, think of how do you convert into an opportunity. The day you start doing that and the day you start seeing results, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. So strength, weakness, opportunities, threat. Make your weaknesses, your strength, make your threats your opportunities so and i think you will never see uh, rejection after that so i hope Rohan, i answer your question there all right so uh, the other question is by prithvi when do you understand that the customer will not buy your product interesting why do people only want to think about not happening or thing but good i think as salesperson this has come to me in the initial uh, years of my life and i must tell you uh, before i uh, answer this question uh, I hate this gentleman called Sid. 
Okay, Sid, S-I-D. My apologies to all the people whose name is Siddharth and you're called Sid. I don't mean any offense to you, but I genuinely don't like word, don't like the word Sid. And Sid to me is self-imposed doubts, you know, and this is what can ruin a salesperson. Self-imposed doubts. Before you go to a customer, you think the customer will not buy. Before you get into something, you think, tell yourself, I cannot do this. I will not be able to do this. Before you venture into something, you've already given up and saying that, no, this is not possible. You know, so I remember one uh, reading which I said, uh, even impossible, if you break it up, it says, I am possible. You know, so I am rather from the school of thought where I would want to make everything possible. And said that, let me answer your question, which says, when do you understand that the customer will not buy your product? Um, I think, uh, Prithvi, this is the question from you. So Prithvi, I think I would rather focus on uh, when will the customer buy the product from me? You know, when, what are the chances, what are the signals that a customer will buy the product from me? And like I said in my earlier question, I think I was answering to Rohan, that if you know your product well, if you know your customer, you know your industry, you know your competition, you know yourself, I don't think this kind of a scenario can come into a sales call. Uh, essentially, this will come into a sales call when you don't know your subject well. You know? And when the customer starts to look here and there, uh, does, there is no eye contact. One biggest losing point in sales is not having eye contact. The moment I sit across to a person or you're sitting across and selling something and the customer finds ways of doing uh, something else, he's writing his check or he wants to see the newspaper, he wants to see the mails on the computer, he wants to call somebody. And that is the time you need to realize that you are not on the right track. And don't take it as a reason that the customer does not want to buy. The reason is that you have not given him enough reason to believe that the customer wants to buy. You know, so then you need to take a step back and again start your conversation, probably do a lot of talking. You know, one thing I, I must tell you by experience, uh, salespeople, and I'm also a salespeople person, I don't uh, believe in in uh, hierarchy, so I still go to customers today, I still do front-end front selling like I used to do 20 years back. One thing I think as salespeople we need to understand is that before we sell a product to somebody, we need to sell ourselves. You know, if I just get into a call and start selling something, we are dealing with humans here. They are no robots. They are, we are dealing with absolute humans who believe that if I believe that if he buys me, he trusts me as a person, he will buy my product, whatever the product is. You know, so the first thing that you need to do on a sales call is create, create something called as the comfort zone. The comfort zone will come from a hello hi, a firm handshake, the way you look into the customer's eye, the way you talk to him, the way you smile, the way you dress up. The first impression just that generally people say, I believe it works. You know, 85% of your job will be done if your first impression is right. The way you greet, the way you handshake, the way you do eye contact, the way you smile, the way you sit, the way you start your conversation, everything counts. And that 85% is taking care of your complete call. So don't think about rejection, think about things of how you can or where you can make a difference to your customer. Okay, um, the other question I think is coming from Raj. Uh, how did the personal contact program in the course help you? Well Raj, great question. I think uh, I have already answered that in my earlier uh, talk that I gave you and I will still spend a minute here on this. It definitely has helped me. Like I said, today when I interact with my colleagues on the other departments, be it supply chain, be be it uh, logistics, be it, I know what their problems are. I know how it can be sorted because I have studied the books which says, and, and I let me also tell you this, you know, people say life is very different. Practical is different, theory is different. I come from the school of thought and by my experience, I can assure you, it is not much of a difference. It is just that how do you apply your theory into practical? So yes, how the personal contact uh, helped me. It helped me get into the depth. It helped me meet fantastic uh, professors which I already named and they are still somebody whom I look up to so if I have a problem I still get in touch with them and say sir how what do you suggest you know and uh, the other thing it helps is in networking when you come for the personal uh, classroom programs that we have in Wellinker uh, at least it helped me in those days because there was no point coming to a class with 180 people taking your book writing your notes and just going away uh, we made a lot of friends I'm still uh, we have a group in fact on whatsapp where we friends are I don't uh, think we meet very often, but yes, at least on WhatsApp we meet and I think once in six months or once in a year, we definitely make it a point to meet. So there are some good friends you make, there are good contacts you make, uh, those contacts can help you directly, indirectly get somebody you know into some other uh, industry. So I think the PCP is a great uh, 
opportunity or a great platform where you can build up networking. I think keep learning two messages here for PCP, in-depth knowledge, clarification of your doubts with the professors and networking. Networking helps in every sphere of life. I hope that answers your question. Uh, we have Reshu here. Reshu says, how did the distance learning course help shape your aspirations? Uh, like I said, uh, Reshu, uh, I know now what the other departments are. So today when I'm looking, I think very fairly, if I tell you if four years back, if I was looking for a CEO's position, I think it would be very unfair. You know, as employees, we always believe that I am the best and why am I not getting a promotion? Why am I not being uh, upgraded? Why am I not being giving X, Y, Z? And why is somebody else uh, making more than me? Today, when I look back, I realize that four years back, if I have to tell myself into a position of a CEO's uh, role, or I would say I would be a complete misfire. You know, and one thing that I, I learned from my bosses is that not every good salesperson can become a good sales manager. Not every good sales manager can become a senior VP or a CEO. And, and I realize how true that is today. Unless you have an in-depth knowledge. So if you want to grow in your career, you need to have idea clarity about what is happening in the other departments as well. And I think for me, my aspirations, uh, definitely I would say now uh, it's time to fly. I think uh, four years back, like I said, it would be unfair. But today when I look at myself, I definitely think I can reach some positions. If my aspirations now are probably higher. Let me admit this, that my aspirations after doing the distance learning program in, uh, in Wellington uh, is actually now higher. So yes, it's definitely helped me. I hope it answers that uh, for you. The next is from, I want to do an, sorry, it's from Shreya. Shreya I says, I want to do an MBA, but I do not want to leave my job and jeopardize my career. Is the distance learning course worth it? Wow. Uh, Shreya, definitely worth it. Yes, absolutely worth it. Uh, I can tell you, I can vouch for that, absolutely worth it. But I must add a rider here, is it depends what you're looking for, you know. Uh, why do you need to jeopardize your career? And I think somewhere one thing is very clear. First thing you need to know is how much of luxury can you afford? Can you actually afford to leave your uh, job or career, current the career that you're pursuing? Take a break and do an MBA. If you can do that, nothing like it because nothing like the real thing. You know, I must admit, if you can take it, uh, because Wellington also has a full-time program uh, that I know of. I used to interact with students during the PCPs uh, in the cafe. We have a fantastic canteen where like in all colleges, we used to spend a lot of time. Uh, so we used to meet our uh, other uh, students who were doing a full-time program. And we realized that somewhere I realized probably that I probably listened to, I should have listened to my father a long time back. But yes, the question comes, did I have the luxury then? No, I did not. So the best bet was to do a, a DLP program. And uh, so to answer your question, definitely yes, provided you have the sincerity, you take it as an opportunity to learn uh, to progress in your career with knowledge rather than just saying that yeah I have an MBA in my hand you know I am an MBA I, if you do that then it doesn't matter you do your MBA from anywhere or whether you do it or not I mean to me a paper MBA will always remember a paper will rem remain a paper MBA so it definitely is worth uh, doing the uh, 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 program Shreya I don't think jeopardizing your career is the right word uh, if I have to look at it it's an investment it's an investment of time it's, may, it's an investment of your knowledge and I'm sure in those two years that you do, uh, even a full time or a DLP, your contacts, your own personality will shape up and, you know, and you'll be doing much uh, better there. So definitely worth it, uh, Shreya. If you have any doubts, uh, please go ahead uh, and uh, do this course. I'm sure you'll realize it was worth it. The next question is from Nilanko. Nilanko, hi. And Nilanko says, how has digitalization affected the sales sector? That's is it. How has digitalization affected the sales sector? Yes, everybody seems to be talking digitalization. So you are not, uh, you are not new. Uh, I am new to the whole concept of digitalization. Call me backward, I would say. But yes, I'm still like learning, still learning technology. I'm still trying to get myself used to it. Uh, smartphones are there, but I probably know only ten functions of the smartphones. But yes, uh, I, let me tell you. In my days, when I started in 97, 98, uh, 98 actually, sorry, not 97, 98. Uh, we used to do all our presentations through, uh, there was something called as OHP sheet, you know, it was called an overhead projection sheet. I even wonder if you have seen it, it was a transparent sheet of paper on which you needed a felt tip marker to write with. And then you had to put it on a large machine which was heated and then it would display to the projection. So those were the days we started. Everything was uh, calculated manually. 
digitalization has definitely so one example that i can give you in digitalization is that earlier we every sales person used to have a brochure you know you used to take brochures you need to take sheets and give it to customers and take print outs today with the advent of uh, invention of tabs it has become much easier you know you just open your tab make a presentation uh, to the customer show the presentation mail it immediately so if you mean digitalization i would probably link it link, link digitalization with computerization and i would say definitely it has been a boom to the uh, sales industry to a sales person life uh, ask me now i mean i remember sitting till 2 and 3 in the morning in those days and trying to write every sku because if you get into sales and especially food sales you have about 27 30 40 50 skus to take care of within each sku you have grammages so everything used to be handed you know and today with the tab and the mobiles and the Uh, smartphones life has honestly become much more easier you in fact google is made life even more simpler google has an answer for everything sir and i think it it is true so yes it has been a boom actually for digitalization um what is the one motto you followed which helped in your career this is from shreya c shreya c says what is the motto you followed which helped you in your career uh, shreya c thanks for that uh, question um I don't know. Is it such a long career? And uh, I don't know if you can make out my size. I'm really huge. One motto wouldn't be sufficient for me, you know. So, uh, uh, very honestly, if I have to look at it and say the two motors, let me share two motors that come to my mind uh, right now. And uh, one of it would be, uh, like I said earlier, you know, one one th earlier thing that I learned, and one of my bosses, uh, Mr. Kamlesh Katoj, who is my guru. whom i really look up look up to and he's like family now he taught me those uh, that the line that i said earlier don't sell what you want to sell never sell what you want to sell sell what the customer wants to buy and you will be successful you know and that is one motto i till date uh, till date i follow and i make sure that i i do that uh, the second motto if i have to tell you is what i uh, thought that day uh, in those days because i told you when i started my industry was very new there was nobody in that industry it was somebody like a Uh, international best foods coming into india and telling indians that you know don't make dal uh, at home we'll give you something with which you can make it was like telling somebody like you know to how to cook biryani i'll give you a mix you make a biryani with and it was very challenging it's like telling somebody almost telling somebody that hey you don't know to how to take make a biryani use this it will be a better product it was something like that that those were the days when i realized that if i have to grow up in my career i have to be different from the rest you know and that's one motto that i make and i always preach this to my team as well is never walk on paths which are existing you know you never make the mistake of walking on paths that are existing innovate try and innovate a new path that you can walk on so that people look up to you you know that's how you grow your career if you get into the regular mundane of doing things uh, it is being doing this way so i will continue to do bring a freshness into it bring innovation into it save time for the company save and time is money mind you right so that's always been my motto till date that i try to bring invention innovation in everything that i do i hope it answers that uh, for you shreyasi okay rohan says uh, how does the faculty contribute in a distance learning uh, program brilliant good question rohan uh, let me tell you apart from the pcps that i talked to you about which is the uh, personal classroom participation what we call it here uh, in wellinger uh, the wellinger college has also given us a uh, it had then i'm sure it has now also but it has the virtual class you know wherein you log in to the internet uh, the professor is sitting on the other side the entire chapter is explained to you in detail we have mcqs after that uh, so the the uh, and the the this is one part which actually made me join wellinger you know i thought you don't have to go to the college because i'm somebody who travels almost and it's been for a long time now that i travel about 15 to 21 days in a month uh, sometime it also goes to about 25 days and one thing i realized is that not every time i could reach the college and uh, wellinger had given us this facility of a virtual classroom session we used to call it vcs then or video conferencing i am not sure of the full full uh, full form of it virtual classroom or video conferencing but yes we had this facility which would start in the evening at about uh, 7 8 o'clock when we finished our work so no matter which city i was uh, which airport i was in where i was in it would i just have to log into that thing the professor on the other side i could interact with him i could type to him and say sir what i have a doubt here the professor would ask so there is a lot of uh, interaction so you know to do a question that how do faculty contribute uh, i think 
one of the things that uh, the professors in Wellington have is this access to students. You know, all the professors were. I mean, I understand we need to respect that they cannot take the calls all the time. But I remember messaging professors whenever I had a doubt, and they would even call back sometime as late as 10, 30, 11 in the night just to clear the doubt. You know, because if I had something to ask somebody, so the professors, the faculties, they definitely contribute. There's a lot of help, be it the projects that they are or the doubts that they, that is there or the concept. Or for a simple matter, like in my time, in those days, if I was stuck into something, I would just call one of the professors and say, Sir, I think this is what is happening and I need to do it here. Do you have a suggestion that I can do otherwise? And they helped me fantastically. So it will definitely, uh, the faculty definitely contributes a lot. At least in Wellington, I can vouch you for that. Uh, the other question comes from uh, Abhishek. And this says, what is the one thing you learned in the distance, manage, distance learning course which you can't learn in a job? So Abhishek, if I get your question right, you say, what does the faculty contribute in a distance learning, no, no sorry, what is the one thing you learned in the distance learning course which you can't learn in a job? Abhishek, I think uh, one word, one phrase I could answer this, management behind the scenes. You know, like I said earlier, when I was in sales, I was doing just sales. I did not know what the other departments were doing, how they were doing or how, I, today I can happily tell you, I can make a contribution to the other department's work that is happening. I can suggest a way that is simply because Wellinker taught me those through the, and they are fantastic course. I mean, uh, I don't know, I may sound like I'm a Wellinker fan, but the fact is I am, you know, because I have high respect for this institution because everybody at every point was accessible. The books were fantastic. The notes given to us were clear. Uh, it left no room. It was, there was no margin for error, error, I would say, you know, so it really taught me what I couldn't learn on job. I couldn't learn on, on my job how production happened, how the bill of material, I could never learn this thing being a salesperson. Uh, how accounting, finance, how do you read the PNL? How what is EBIT before? Uh, so these kind of things is something that I think uh, what the program taught me or what any MBA program would teach you. I think in the interest of time, uh, we have one final question to take. Uh, so we'll take the last one here. I think this is from Ashton. Ashton says, being a sales head, what is one important advice you would ask newbies to follow? Okay, Ashton, you remind me of my old days. Uh, I feel as a fresher again now. Now, very honestly, I would, uh, I think if I have to uh, tell you what to do, I would simply say like what my boss told me that, uh, be sincere, be honest, be punctual. These are the things that I, I know and I'm sure everybody would tell you, you know, be disciplined, be committed, respect the other person. Uh, I think apart from that, Ashton, one thing that I would definitely want to tell you here, which I see a very often, a very uh, often these days, be stable, think about stability, you know, and I always say whenever I even go to management colleges when students are passing out, I always tell them choose a job which you think you can do. Don't take up any job. So typically what happens is I understand I have gone through this when we're sitting in hotel management uh, and campus would come, we were like open for everything. I mean, uh, there would be a Taj, there would be Jet Airways, there would be uh, SL World coming those days. And we were like, Koi bhi le lo, yeah, just give us a job. Give me one job that I want to take. So I want, I mean, the best thing, and then I tell you the feeling that I had, I don't want to go home after three years of my father paying my fees and saying that, dad, I have come back with my, uh, my day hotel management that time. But I didn't want, I had this fear that how do I go and tell my father, I'm so many companies came for campus and I didn't have a job. Lot of people till they do this. My only suggestion to you, uh, Ashton is that, if you are complete fresher, if you've not picked up a job or if you've already picked up a job, it's not too late. Do a job that you love. Don't do a job which you think will pay you money. You know, if you do that, you're doomed. So therefore, I would suggest everybody here that take up jobs that you love, take up jobs that you think you have the passion for, take up jobs where you think you can make a contribution to the company. It's not that the company has to make a contribution all the times in, ter in terms of paying you money or perks and benefits. You have to make, you have to give it back. You have to justify your cost. If you don't know the subject, if you don't know the job, you don't have a liking for it, you would for the rest of your life be cribbing and saying, I got into a wrong profession. And by the time you realize it will be too late. Two years, three years, I don't know how experienced you are already, but uh, if you still have time and if you think that you want to change, this is the time, go ahead and do it. Choose a profession that you like. And I hope uh, it answers your question, Ashton. So I think uh, that's all we have time for. Uh, so those of you, so those of you, if if you have find uh, found this program to be useful to you in any ways, um, I uh, please if you have any other questions, please do post on the Wellinger site. I will personally ensure that I answer this. Uh, 
those of you who are thinking whether you should do it or not do it uh, let me tell you it's a fantastic program uh, by wellinger uh, i still vouch for it and i do suggest that if you want to do an mba please go ahead the admissions are now open you can use the uh, helpline which is 4051 that's the number for wellinger wellinger also has a website called uh, www let me see if i can get this right but you can google it again but it is www.wellinger.org yeah so org sorry org uh, wellinger online wellinger online uh, dot wellinger online dot org okay so i got confused with that so wellinger online dot org is the website go on it get your doubts clarified come to the college talk to the professors talk to the real hybrid uh, department i'm sure they'll guide you so that's all from me thank you so much take care god bless you do well in life and i hope we meet somewhere in some place god bless thank you